Mr. Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> That's the future. Yeah. Do you like a good musical? I, lo I love musical theatre. He's a good looking man, isn't he? Welcome to London. I know you've been here before. Thank you. Uh, you're back in for how long just to talk about the film? Is that right? I'm here for two days. Just for two days? Yeah. How did the premiere of the movie go this week? It was great. And well, this premiere, you know, this premiere they had fake snow coming down for the press line. Well, so. you know, weirdly, the weather, you probably didn't need to have fake snow. I think we got some on the way anyway. <laughs> no. But this is because uh, it's a weather-based film, of course. Yes, it's, you know, it's based, you know, there's the snow and there's rain and... Ice? There's ice and... Hurricanes? Hurricanes. Tornadoes? Thank you, keep going. Tsunami? Yep. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the premiere, uh, this was a good one because of the, because they went the extra mile, because they put the money... Yeah, they, they, made, they made it snow at the premiere and it was made of soap, the right. snow. You know, so it floated down like it was snow. Beautiful, and the summertime yeah. was beautiful. But the thing that made it the best were the fans, I think. Really? There were just crazy fans there. You've yeah. got a big fan base. Did you know that? No, I didn't you know that. Have. I didn't know really, that either. Really I was great. surprised. We almost didn't book you on the show. And then... <laughs> because I thought maybe no one had heard of you. And you've got that funny name going on I as know, well. Although, you know, sorry. people say, who's on the show? I'll have to say, well, we've got Janet Jackson. Everyone knows Janet Jackson. We've got Elliot Gould. You've got Jake... <laughs> Who's he? But no, people are going nuts for you. That's what it's like being in a restaurant. <clears throat> Welcome, Mr. Bl Bl <laughs> Where is the name from, Gyllenhaal? It's Swedish. It's a Swedish name. And your parents, but your parents live in America. Were they Swedish immigrants or was that uh, a generation before them? It was many generations before. But supposedly, supposedly my great, 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 wow. great, great grandfather was Jesus. <laughs> A long, or, or maybe an associate of his. Oh, do I hope so? That's a long time oh, ago. Do I hope so. <laughs> no, he, he was a, he was a, unfortunately, he was a beetle collector. He was a beetle collector. Yeah. How and do it, you know this? I haven't actually. I may have been lied to. It was the same. <laughs> I, my, well, no, hold it. If they were going to lie to you, they'd say something other than a no, beetle my collector. My father, my father told me that that artichoke was named after a guy named Artie who choked on an artichoke. <laughs> he also told me that story too. So about my name. So I'm not sure what's real and what's Jill not. Gillenhall. Uh, so I imagine growing up, you spent a lot of time spelling it to people, correcting their pronunciation of it. I don't really remember that in my childhood, really. I didn't spend, I meant, I think I spent much of my childhood, you know, playing around. Yeah, yeah. And then... Some... Like kids do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was a so. regular childhood, not one of those spelling out your name kind of childhoods <laughs> yeah. that, that, that I endured. Um, <laughs> um, you could have changed the name, I guess, though, but uh, you don't need to, I suppose. M to Jake Matilda? Yeah, or something like that. Jake Mitchum. Jake Mitchum. <laughs> that that sounds like a movie star that name. That would have worked out See, really it doesn't well. sound like a movie star name, if you don't mind me saying so, Jake. My last name? Yeah. That's why I like it. Okay. Um, the Day After Tomorrow is the name of Jake's new movie. Uh, it's out today here in the United Kingdom. Well, you, you set out for us. What happens in the movie? Because I know people... It's one of those movies which is sort of like an agenda-setting film, isn't it? Everyone talks about the topic involved. Everyone gets very excited about what it has to say. What's, what's the, uh, the plot? <clears throat> well, basically, can I swear? Of course you... Have you not been listening to so far this week? <laughs> Elliot Gould was... <laughs> of this... <laughs> sure, we've edited for you at home. There's like a blue cloud over his head. That's good. Um, no, it's a movie. It's, it's a movie where the weather is shit. Yeah, basically. basically. That sums it up neatly. That's perfect. Yeah, but, but it's like the shittiest weather you've ever seen in your life. It's really it? shitty. I mean, it's shitty weather. <laughs> I wish you, you got to say that line in the film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It would have been amazing. Uh, I think it's got a bad title, your film, if you don't mind me saying so. You think so? Yeah, The Day After Tomorrow is almost a meaningless title. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what day give. is it today? It's Friday, right? Today's Friday. <laughs> if I were going to ask you, let's say, like, what, what day is Sunday? Yes. What would you say? I'd say uh, it's just before Monday. <laughs> For the sake of argument. They contemplated with that title, but then yeah. they decided. No, I'll tell you why, because it doesn't go. What you want to call it, it should be called. You know what it should have been called? What? I see death. <laughs> yeah. Now you see how excited everyone got when I said that thing, yeah. <laughs> I see death. That's a great idea. Uh, now, what do you. What, in that movie, you've got everything you need for a blockbuster, I feel. You've got, you've got running, you've got shouting, you've got screaming, you've got terrorized people, you've got bad, bad, bad weather. Okay? <laughs> There's even one scene where, unless I remember this incorrectly, you punch a wolf. 
sounds like it sounds like Elliot Gould's movie in some weird no, no, way. No, it's not like it's a boxing wolf. You <laughs> <laughs> do, do you? Give him the old. I do give him. I do. Yeah, I do. I beat up a wolf. <laughs> was that uh, an actual wolf or a, a man in a wolf suit? All the wolves were fake. The fake wolves. All the wolves were fake. It, they were they were all CGI'd. So we spent two weeks shooting a scene with wolves that didn't exist. And for me, it was um, disturbing because I was running away from nothing for two weeks. <laughs> that must be peculiar. Well, it's weird. It's weird because you think, you know, when you're filming a scene like that and you read it in the script that there'll be wolves there. Yeah. And there weren't wolves there. It was just awkward. Did you go home and think, well, maybe tomorrow there'll be a, a real wolf? No, I went, I went home and I said, maybe the day after tomorrow there'll be a wolf. <laughs> You see, that now, now it makes, yeah, 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 yeah. Now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can I say something, Jake, quite personal to you? Is this all right? Yeah. You've got quite a large head for your proportion. <laughs> but, no, because I tell you, because you're a good looking man. This is not an insult anyway. He's a great looking fellow. Look at him. He's much better looking than I've ever been, but slightly out of proportion head. Yeah. You must, are you aware of this? Yeah. Yeah. When did it get bigger than this? <laughs> Well, uh, when I was like, when I was six years old, my mom took me to the carnival. And, uh, no, I don't know, I was born with it, man. But, it's, but, but do you think, here's what I'm asking, do you think you've still got a bit of growing to do? You know, I'll tell you something, there are a lot of people in the world who wouldn't have a problem with having an abnormally sized head. Yeah, you've got a big you one. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I tell you who's got, I tell you who's got a, a whopper, <laughs> Dennis Hopper. Hopper's got a whopper. Hopper's got a whopper. I've met him. It's almost half his actual height, his head. <laughs> when I first saw him, I wanted to put him on the dashboard of my car and watch it wobble. <laughs> I've never seen his head before. I've never noticed his head before, really. I've just noticed well, his now, incredible But you see, what's weird is, and this is why I was raising that, I wasn't just being silly, of course that was yeah. partly, but uh, it seems to me that uh, when you do have a slightly larger head, it really works on screen. Uh, when you're being filmed with movies, I've met a lot of movie stars, many of them have slightly larger heads than you would think was actually necessary. <laughs> and they're, they're the ones who look the best on screen. That's nice of you. Yeah. Thank you. I imagine James Dean looked like someone from the Easter Islands <laughs> in real life. <laughs> on screen, physically perfect human being. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's the first film that I'd seen Jake in. Uh, I'd heard his name, I hadn't seen a movie. A movie came out, I think about two years ago, maybe I'm 2001, I think it was over here. Donnie Darko. What a tremendous movie. Uh, it did pretty well. It should have done much better. It should have been like the biggest movie that year. It was a, what a fabulous film. Thank, that's another movie about an enormous rabbit. Well, it kind of is, isn't it? There's a sort of a, there's a theme developing in the, uh, the show this evening. But uh, what a strange film as well. I mean, I've seen it about three, four times now. I'm not sure still if I've got the completely right angle on it, but I uh, enjoy it in a different way every time. I'm assuming that's sort of uh, on purpose. Did you... That's the point, yeah. Is it clear in the script what it's meant to be about? Are you allowed to draw your own conclusion, do you think? I think that's what the whole movie's about. I think the movie is meant to have the holes it has so that people can fill them in themselves. But, you know, I know the real answer to the movie. And it is? Um, now, briefly, Donnie Darko, though, yeah. uh, a, a movie I imagine you're very proud of. Now, would I be right in thinking that you're deliberately doing, like, the indie movie, then the big movie, then you're, you're kind of trying to vary that, that side of your career? I don't, I don't think it's like a conscious decision to make a small movie and a big movie. I kind of just float from story to story. You know, one that I think is important and f deals with an issue that's important is something like Day After Tomorrow. And it's fun and it's huge and it has a, you know... But it gets people talking. But it gets people talking, yeah. like it got you talking nonsense. But hey, it still got you talking. Steady on, steady on. And then, steady on. <laughs> and then you know, I'm strangely attracted to you. I don't know, we should talk about that. <laughs> and then anyway, the other thing... Is, uh, I'm just wondering really quickly if you know what's happening the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. Is, uh, it's, it's a fun film. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to see Jake punch a wolf, where else are you going to go? <laughs> I punched a goat in real life once. <laughs> I don't think... No, no, no. You think, you know, you think punching is a different thing. That's no. what I... That's what I... That's what I... <laughs> Better moment to end the interview on. Jake, a real pleasure meeting you. Thank you for, you. Thank having you for having coming you. on. Jake Gillen Hall, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'll see you after. Take care. Thank you. I don't know who started this. I think Elliot Gould's a bad influence on everyone this evening with the, the swearing. Yeah, you see. <laughs> that was great. That was great fun.